Well, welcome human biology class. Um, you're in my basement with, uh, with Becky and I. Um, hello. And um, we're uh, dissecting a fetal pig as promised. Um, I'm hoping that this will work. We're just doing it on an iPhone and rather than, than a GoPro and Beck's gonna zoom in and out. Hopefully uh, we'll capture this. The idea here is just to give you a general idea of um, how the human body is put together. And we're using a pig model because pigs are fairly close to that. These are fetal pigs. Um, this is a male here. This is the scrotum underneath the tail here. We have a female right here. And um, the female, uh, you can always tell because there is a urogenital papilia right here underneath the tail. Um, there are just a few differences between pigs and humans. Um, um, and I'll, I'll point those out as we go. Um, these fetal pigs, uh, the farmer uh, may not have known the sow was pregnant when he sold her, but I'm, I'm sure that's not the case. Farmer might sell the sow um, um, to reduce the size of his herd or um, simply because he wanted the extra weight. Um, uh, that the pregnant sow would have. The slaughterhouse doesn't mind that because we pay a lot of money for these fetal pigs. There's a slit in the neck right here where they've been injected with red and blue latex. Red latex in the arteries and blue latex in the veins. Uh, okay, so if we look at this pig uh, externally first, um, the tongue, uh, fairly sizable thing, taste bud sticking out there. Um, uh, here we have the umbilical cord. And uh, yeah, we're going to start off with looking at the mouth. Now, Beck, you're going to have to know if you need to zoom in on this or not. So I've already cut, um, cut down the corner of the mouth here on both sides, uh, kind of cut through the, the TMJ joint, the, the temporal mandibular joint, the joint that allows the mouth to open, and it's going to open unusually far. Okay, And so inside the oral cavity here then, um, you can see we have the hard palate, that's this part, right here, that would be the, the roof of your mouth, and behind that is the soft palate, right here, okay? And so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna open this cut up a little bit because we're gonna look for a particular structure in here. And uh, right here, at the back of the mouth, we see what I'm looking for. Right here, pardon the interruption, I'm waiting on a phone call, important phone call. So right here at the back of the mouth, so here's the soft palate, here's the hard palate. Uh, pigs are omnivores, and if you look here, you can see a pretty good set of teeth, and, uh, and here as well. So right here at the back of the mouth, there's this little flap of skin. This is the epiglottis, and uh, the opening um, that it's around is called the glottis. And here at the back, I kind of cut through the soft palate here, but right here at the back of things, I'm putting the, the blunt probe down the esophagus. This is the tube that leads to the stomach. In front of that, let's see if I can make this, bring this around a little bit so you can see a little bit better. How are we doing, Beck? Able to see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so in front, so here's the, here's the epiglottis right here. In front of that, Surrounded by, or, sorry, here's the esophagus right here. The epiglottis right here surrounds the front tube. That's the windpipe. That goes down to the lungs. So if I use two blunt probes here, I need I need one more set of hands. And I'm just going to use this as a sponge, okay? And um, there, I think you can see see a little bit better. So this tube here, the back tube goes down to the stomach. The front tube right here goes down to the lungs. The epiglottis covers this hole right here so that this flap of tissue would, would, would cover this hole so that when uh, the pig or human eats, food can go around this flap and down into the esophagus and not down into the windpipe. Of course, if you tell somebody a joke and they start laughing when they are um, uh, eating with a mouthful of food, that can jar the uh, epiglottis away from that hole, and food can go down the wrong tube. It can also go up here. Um, this is the nasal passages. I'm sticking the blunt probe in here, and actually can come out the nose. You've seen somebody that's drinking something, and they start laughing, and it'll actually kind of sometimes come out the nose. Yeah, okay. Okay, 
Um, there are some teeth here, some early form teeth here. Um, here's one right there. Um, and, and so, yeah, so you've got um, the oral cavity. Really, that's what we're going to be looking at is a, a series of, of different cavities. Okay, now next I'm going to uh, open uh, this pig up. And um, to do that, if you look in your lab manual, I'm on page 75. You can kind of follow along. I'm going to do a little bit different cut than they suggest in there. Um, how's that, Beck? Okay, so I'm going to do this kind of horseshoe-shaped cut around the umbilical cord. I'm pulling up on it, and I'm going to go way down here. Okay, pulling up on it. And uh, it's just a nice handle that allows me to cut, and I don't want to cut too deeply. I want to be able to pull material up out of the way, like so. And then I'm cutting into... Um, into the abdominal cavity. Uh, right inside the abdominal cavity, um, we're going to see some structures. Right away we see some structures. Okay, this one right here, this is the umbilical vein right here. It's going to the umbilical cord from the liver to the umbilical cord, and I'm going to cut that right away. So when I do that, then this whole flap opens right up. Sorry. Opens right up, and away we go. Then I'm going to continue on up, pulling up on this. I'm kind of going kind of fast here, probably faster than I should. Um, I don't want you to spend time watching me cut. And I want to continue that cut right up to the base of the chin here. There's a little bump right here on a pig's chin, and that's my goal. Okay. I would like to split the sternum. I got a little bit off to the side here. And... Uh, and then I'm going to open this pig up. Actually, that's not too bad. There's some, vas some vasculature in here I want to show you, too. So what I'm going to do now, then, now that I've opened it up, okay, I want to show you. Uh, right here, this is the abdominal cavity, right here. And then up here uh, is the thoracic cavity. And they are separated by the diaphragm that I have right here between my fingers. I'm going to take a scissors and I'm just going to cut down through ribs, baby back ribs. Dad. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that on both sides if I can. I'm going to turn this around just a little bit here and then I'm going to tighten up this cord that I've got, the string that I've got. I'm cutting through some diaphragm here, but I'm trying not to cut through organs. There we go. Turn it back around. Grab that string. I want to pull it tight. And uh, have it so that you can see into those two cavities. Because really what we're looking for is a look at the major organs that are in those two cavities. So that didn't work real great. Pause it for a sec, Beck. Okay, we pause it just so uh, you didn't have to watch me tying a string. Okay, so again, right here, <clears throat> let me get this. This is the diaphragm that I've got my fingers on right here. Below it is gonna be some organs, the liver and the stomach, and above it, um, we can see uh, lung, and uh, the heart is right here. And it's inside of, there's actually three sort of sub sacs in the, in the thoracic cavity. There's a right one, a central one, and a left one. And I'm going to pull the pericardial sac containing the heart away from the wall. And there you can see lung, heart, lung. Uh, right lung, heart, left lung. Remember, it's always the subjects right and left. Okay, Beck, why don't you flip the page and we'll see what, what else is there. I'm going to be cutting the diaphragm then, since you can see where the diaphragm is. I'm going to cut it right against the wall so that those cavities open up a little bit better. Okay. I guess I didn't get it too close to the wall there. And I'm going to get rid of some of this extra fluid in here. Uh, these pigs have been preserved, but uh, it's not quite as noxious as uh, of preservatives as it used to be. Beck might disagree with me, but um, it's uh, it's a little bit little bit milder. And we've got some paper towels here just to absorb the extra fluid. 
Okay, what do we got? We did the oral cavity back. Why don't you flip one more page? I'm going to um, cut the other side, the diaphragm on the other side here as well. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to take some pins and just hold that flap down. These are wax trays that I've got the pig in here and just uh, open it up so that hopefully you can see inside it a little bit better and I'll get some of this extra moisture out of the way and there we have it so um, here again is the diaphragm that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity I'm getting some of that extra moisture out of the way there we go Okay, so if we look uh, through the list, now I'm on page 78. Um, actually, I think we can go one more, Beck. We can go 79. We can go 80. There we go. On page 80, um, it starts looking at some major structures. So um, it's going to start up here in the neck, so I guess I will do the same. Now, I've opened the skin up here, and you can kind of look here, and you can see, see a couple of muscles. One's right here and one's right here. Uh, if somebody you know, clenches their jaw really tight and juts it out, you can make these muscles bulge out. Um, they're um, actually called uh, a sternocleidomastoid. You don't need to remember that. They go from the, uh, uh, the uh, mastoid process behind the ear and the sternum and the cla clavicle is the collarbone, but those are those muscles. They're kind of a guiding spot. If I take those and I kind of use those as a central line and I kind of pull tissue away to either side, uh, we can see some structures in here. And I'm going to get a blunt probe, and that way I don't damage what I don't want to damage. And right here is the first structure I want to point out. Um, right uh, in front of the larynx, well, this is the larynx right here. And right below the larynx, the voice box, is a gland. This is the thyroid gland. If you remember, uh, we did a little talk on the importance of iodine and salt and the production of the, the, the hormone thyroxine. And when you don't get enough, the thyroid gland can enlarge and get really big there. That's the thyroid gland. On either side of that, deeper in the tissue, a little bit deeper in the tissue, um, and to the side of the muscles, we have another gland and it is the thymus gland. And if, the, if you remember, the thymus gland is where, uh, right here, thymus gland, there's some here, there's some here on this side. That's where T lymphocytes go to mature. They're formed in the bone marrow, but they go to this gland to grow up, if you will. Now, this gland is huge in fetal pigs. It actually is up here, it's up here. It comes down, there's a constriction point, and we actually find it again in the pericardial sac uh, on top of the heart. So I'm going to open this up and we'll see more thymus gland actually embedded in right here. This is thymus gland right in the pericardial sac right on top of the heart. So thymus gland here, thymus gland here and here. It, it's kind of like a butterfly with two wings here and two wings down here and a constriction point in the middle. As you age, that shrinks because you, you don't need a spot for as many uh, T lymphocytes to go to mature anymore. Okay, so thymus or th thyroid, thymus, larynx. If we pull the thyroid gland aside just a little bit, and I pull some of this soft tissue out of the way, um, right below the voice box, you can see the trachea. That can can you see those rings, those stacked rings there? Okay, those are rings of cartilage. Um, if you put your hand on your trachea you can feel that that's a fairly rigid tube. And it, it, it has to be, because it has to stay open. This can't collapse like your uh, eustachian tube that goes to your ear, um, because then you wouldn't get uh, air into your lungs. So, so that stays open. Behind it, it's a little harder to see, behind it is the esophagus. And that's a, that's a looser tube, um, because um, it, it doesn't have to stay open the same way that the trachea does. Um, Head. My head's in the way? Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, can they see down in there, Beck? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it does. It, there's a, a vein in the way, but right here would be the esophagus. Right on top of it would be the trachea. So the esophagus is going down to the stomach, which we'll get to in a second. It's got to go through the diaphragm and down to the stomach. But the trachea right here goes into the lungs. 
Okay, where are we where are we at? Okay, can you yeah, okay. So we've got a couple of lungs here. Um and uh, maybe I'll I'll cut one out. Um, you can see that the right lung here has this extra flap that's not so prominent on the left lung. Uh, the difference here, this flap on the right lung, not so much there on the left lung. So if we uh, open that up a little bit, uh, maybe I'll even get a lung out of there. Why don't you pause it for a sec, Beck? Okay. <clears throat> right here, that trachea has, has branched and... Um, this is one of the two primary bronchi. I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to pull that lung right out. And if you look right here, <clears throat> actually, I kind of cut it long section here. Let's see if I can. Uh, there we go. So there's there's the primary bronchi, the big tube. I kind of cut it long section here, that goes down into the lungs. And you can see there's there's branches that go into different parts of the lung, those little side passageways, so that if I uh, put a straw in there and blew on it, um, that whole lung would uh, expand and contract. So that would sit right down in here, like that. Okay, so then we have the heart, and I've already cut the pericardial sac. It is a tough sac that's, that surrounds the heart. I mean, it, it is impressive. I could pick this whole pig up um, with the with this sack. That's how tough it is. Um, so anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm removing the sack and the thymus gland. Okay, Beck told me my gloves are getting in the way some, so she's going to holler at me when they do. So this is pericardial sac and this is thymus gland right right here. Okay, and I'm I'm going to I'm going to pull them out of the way and we look at the heart. Here's here's an atrium. This would be the right atrium. Here's the left atrium right here. This would be the right ventricle. This would be the left ventricle. This vessel right here, everybody thinks that's the aorta. That is not. It's coming from the right ventricle. That is the pulmonary artery, and it's going out to the lungs. It's going to go back behind the heart and then branch both ways. So there you have that. And then we have the other lung right here. Okay. Um, we could cut into that heart just a little bit here see what we see. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot. I'll try to cut it right in the long section here. I'll get my gloves out of the way in just a second. This is some of that blue latex that was injected into the pig. Okay, just blue rubber. And uh, maybe here you can see this bit large left ventricle and the right ventricle. There's really not, not very much there at all. Uh, but I didn't do a real good job of cutting that in section. So anyway, let's move on to the abdominal cavity. Here is uh, the... Uh, okay, so again, here's the diaphragm. We're down in the abdominal cavity. This is the largest organ in the body. Um, this is the liver. Um, some would argue that the skin is the largest organ in the body, but we'll, we'll go with the liver, the more traditional interpretation. If I turn this this way, Beck, would that be helpful? I want you all to see, under the right side of the liver, right here, actually embedded in it, that is the gallbladder. Okay, so here is, so, so bile is produced in the liver, it's stored and concentrated in the gallbladder, and you can see the tube that runs, this is the common bile duct that goes from the gallbladder down right to the small intestine. Okay, this is the stomach right here, right below the left side of the liver. So we got more liver right here. Right underneath that, here is the stomach. And you can follow that, that bile duct right down where the stomach meets the small intestine. That's where the bile duct dumps its goods, if you will, into the uh, digestive tract. So anyway, if we put this back in place, so there's, okay, brief uh, timeout for pig adjustment. So anyway, here is uh, the diaphragm, thoracic cavity above it, abdominal cavity below it. Um, here is the liver. If we lift up the left side of the liver, right underneath that is the stomach. That's right here. And this, this long thing that looks like a tongue right here, this is actually the spleen. Now in people, it would, it would sit right here on the side. It wouldn't be as long and skinny, but it would be generally in the same spot. 
So right near the stomach on, on the left side of the body. I'm going to pull the stomach up out of the way. These, of course, are intestines. How am I doing, Beck? You see that okay? Okay, because I want to... I want to get through some of this um, soft tissue right here to get at a, get at a very important organ um, associated with the digestive tract, and it's right there. I always think it looks like either chewed chewed gum, or uh, some say it looks like brain. Um, this is the pancreas underneath the stomach, and it's a fairly uh, expansive organ. Um, there's a portion that's here, there's a portion that goes down here, another portion that goes up here. And this, of course, is, is important. You can see here uh, a duct right here that delivers um, pancreatic juice uh, right into the spot where the bile duct does. Both of them uh, dumped their um, digestive enzymes or whatever they have in the case of bile uh, for the gallbladder, into the small intestine right where it exits the stomach. So right here, this structure, it's actually hard to the touch. That is the pyloric sphincter, okay? That's the valve that controls uh, when con contents come out of the stomach and go into the small intestine. This would be the duodenum right here. Bile comes from the gallbladder and the bile duct goes in there. Pancreatic juice with all its enzymes uh, goes in uh, that same spot as well. Of course, the pancreas also produces insulin. That doesn't go into the digestive tract. That goes into the bloodstream. Okay, let's see how we do it. I'm going to flip the page there, Beck. All right. Um, we, yeah, let's, let's go with a few more things here. Okay, so um, again, just to put everything back in place here. There we go. Uh, abdominal cavity, liver, gallbladder, uh, stomach, spleen, pancreas okay down here then we have small intestine okay uh, most of this that you see here is small intestine uh, okay and if we take some of that small intestine and uh, we spread it apart you can see here there's a uh, we, we call that a, a peritoneum a, a mesentery uh, two two thin layers and I'll put my finger behind it here uh, and you can see right there, that sort of a fan-shaped uh, tissue, two-sided tissue that holds the small intestines in place. This, this is the, the, the arrangement of the small intestine is not accidental. And here are all the arteries, veins, nerves, and lacteal that that take material from the digestive tract, deliver it to the digestive tract. That's where all those little vessels and nerves are that control it and and deliver goods to and from it. So small intestine mesentery, and uh, those are the main things to know from that. Okay, if we take all that seemingly randomly piled in there stuff, and we move it to the side, I'm going to move it from the left side of the pig to the right side of the pig. Right here we see sort of a, a tight band, and it's a little bit greener in color. This is actually the, the, the colon, a part of the large intestine. Pigs have a bigger large intestine than humans do. They're called a hindgut digester. Cows digest cellulose in a rumen. Pigs and horses do it back here in a cecum. And so if we, if we pull that to the side, I'm, I'm looking for a particular spot in a structure, and my gloves might be in the way here for just a second, um, but I need to find one particular thing, and it's in a different spot uh, in every individual, so I never know quite exactly where I'm gonna find it, but we'll look. Pause it for a sec. But. <clears throat> okay, so right here, if I can separate this out a little bit more, is the structure I was looking for. I will try to um, get it cleaned up so you can see it a little bit easier. I'm just cutting some of that uh, connective tissue out of the way. And, uh, and this is an important spot because this is one of the differences between pigs and people. In people, this structure would be on the right side uh, of the body, but in a pig, it's on the left side. Okay, so right here, if we look, this is the spot where the small intestine meets the large intestine. Right here is small intestine. It's right underneath the spiral colon, okay? 
right here. This is small intestine. You come here and you got a fork in the road. Remember what Yogi Berra said about coming to a T in the road? When you come to a T in the road, take it. Okay, so right here, this is a dead end. This is the cecum in a pig. In us, this would be our appendix, and it would be on the other side. But this is what it would look like, and it's, it's situated the same way. Small intestine meets large intestine, one-way street going to the appendix. Uh, the other way goes through the rest of the uh, large intestine, um, all wrapped around and uh, comes out right here. You see that, Beck? Mm -hmm. Right there is large intestine down to the rectum and anus down in there. All right, uh, flip the page back. Okay, did this, yep, 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 did that, did that, okay. All right, so um, that's the main uh, organs in that cavity. We're gonna go to one more cavity here, and uh, this is a male pig, and so right here, there are um, a couple of features that will stand out. Um, first of all, the penis on a, on a pig is right here behind the umbilical cord, right there. It's not very pronounced. There's the urethra that goes all the way down. This is a topic we're talking about in, in lecture, so this is good. All the way down from the bladder all the way down. So let's see. Let's, let's open this up a little bit. Um, Beck, I'm going to have you pause it again. What I'm going to do while she pauses it, I'm just going to open up this up so we can see in here a little bit better. So go ahead. Okay, so what I've done, I just cut the skin there and I've cut down through tissue. Um, again, uh, penis is right here. So there's a urethra is the tube that connects um, the bladder to the exterior of the body. And so I'm just separating here. And uh, there we have uh, a urethra. And um, on either side of it are like two little saddlebags here and here. That's the scrotal sac. And um, if I open that up, See if I can open it up a little bit more. There, I'm going to open up that scrotal sac a little bit. And inside of it, we'll find what makes a boy piggy a boy piggy. Well, part of it. This is a testis, and this is epididymis. And this is connected to the abdominal cavity through a hole in the bottom of the abdominal cavity right here. This is called the inguinal canal, and that hole actually goes down into this scrotal sac. You can see the blunt probe come out right there, from there, okay? And uh, the other one is on the other side right here, and uh, this is uh, why men have a bigger problem with, with hernias. Um, there's a hole in the bottom of the abdominal cavity wall. If you lift something really heavy, you're, a, a fl you're, you're flexing those abdominal muscles, putting lots of pressure on the organs, and it can force them down into that hole. It can tear that hole out, and, and uh, organs, uh, basically intestines, can actually start to leak down into the scrotal sac, one or both of them. Okay, so there's one scrotal sac on one side right there. Here's the other one. That's a little bit embedded in tissue here yet. On the other side, right there, okay? In between them is a tube, that's urethra. Um, I wanna track that, actually go back a little bit up into the body cavity here. And uh, right here, um, you can see a bulge on this side, and there's another bulge on this side, okay, I'm going to work on this one. Those are the kidneys. They're called retroperitoneal because they are held against the back of your abdominal cavity wall by a layer of this peritoneum. But you'll notice there is not a, the rib cage basically stops right here. They're, they have no protection. That's why a blow to the small of the back is so dangerous because kidneys have um, a lot of blood supply going to them and not much protection uh, uh, if they get um, hit really hard. So I'm going to pull one of these kidneys out, and you, again, just like the heart, you never know what you're going to get. Um, like a box of chocolates. A um, little Forrest Gump for you there. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to uh, pull the kidney out, but I want you to see here, um, there's a, a vein. You can see the vein pretty well right there, the blue thing. 
That's the renal vein. The renal artery is down in here. I'm gonna um, um, highlight that one on the other side a little bit more. Because arteries are thicker walled, you can't see the red in it as well. So I'm gonna reach across the screen and I'm actually gonna cut this out of here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, and uh, with this new, newer preservative, um, sometimes the three layers of the kidney that I talked about in lecture don't show up as good on, uh, on these kidneys, but uh, we'll give it a go and see what shows up. So I'm gonna try to do this without cutting my hand. I'll come back, I'll bring it back in the screen back. And I gotta come out of the screen for a second, don't worry, I'll come back. So I'm going to just open the kidney up. Huh. Well, this isn't terrible. Ah. So right here, you can see a lighter layer around the outside. That's the cortex of the kidney. There's a redder area right here. Um, that's the medulla. And then this gristly area right here, that's the pelvis. The renal pelvis, okay, and um, I I cut the uh, ureter, which is the tube that carries. I'll put a forceps on it so you can see it. And that's right here, okay. I dropped the kidney. Well, let me go over that. Let me just go reiterate that. So again, kidney and cross section. Here's the cortex. Here's the medulla, and the renal pelvis is the central portion right here with the holes in it. That shows up actually pretty well on there. Um, okay, so let's look at the pig now and uh, let's track. So I took the kidney out. R right there is the ureter. And uh, I'm going to just pull some of this um, soft tissue out of the way. Um, I want you to be able to see the squiggly tube right here. There we go. That is the ureter. Okay, that is going to carry... Let me put this strap back on here for a second. I'll probably take it off again here. That's going to carry urine from the kidney, which was right here, to the bladder, which is right here. Now, this is a fetal pig. So right here is an umbilical artery, and here is another umbilical artery. These are carrying blood from mom to the piggy, and right between them, then, is the bladder. After birth, of course, the umbilical cord is severed. Um, these arteries cease to pump blood. They become a ligament that holds the bladder in place. It takes on a rounder structure and sits right there in the middle of the body. Okay, so again, here's, here's where the kidney was, okay, right here. It's going to carry, uh, urine will flow down the ureter to the urethra. And then right between the two ureters, so if we look here a little bit, we can see there's actually two tubes here. Here's an umbilical artery right here. Here's where the ureter comes in right here. Does that show up good, Beck? Two tubes, one there, one there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so, um, yeah, don't want to confuse those two. So right between, the, so there are actually four tubes, one, two, three, four, uh, each side. Right between them right here is where the urethra exits the bladder, travels down to the base of the tail, and then right here comes back up, right here is the urethra, comes back up and out the penis right there. Okay, that is a long tube. In humans, it's 18 inches long. That's why guys have more of a problem with the plugged tube and women have more of a problem because their urethra is shorter with a, um, with a, a urinary tract infection. Okay, so if we look then just a little bit more at the male here, um, Right here then is the bladder, um, as umbilical artery, umbilical artery, ureter coming in, ureter coming in, urethra going out. Right here is um, an important structure as well. This is, well, it's a number of things. This is a nerve, an artery, a vein, and uh, a vas deferens. That's the tube that carries uh, sperm from the testis. Actually, sperm is produced in the testis, stored in the epididymis. The epididymis then is connected to the vas deferens and comes right up here and connects to the, ure the urethra. You know, the, the main difference between a, a boy and a girl is it's a vas deferens.
That's a little pig humor. That's a little dissection humor there for you. Okay, so right here, this is the vas deferens. That's coming out the inguinal canal from the scrotal sac. Okay, most of that tube is carrying sperm. Right here then is an important spot. Um, later, um, this is where the prostate gland will be. It has not yet formed in this, this piggy. As, as pigs and as people mature, get older, that prostate gland gets big and it can get too big and actually cut off the flow of the urethra that it's sitting right on, on top of. Also right here, are, there's another set of glands. They're called seminal vesicles. You can't see them real good. I'm not going to worry about them too much. But mainly, uh, know, know the flow of urine because that's the topic we're um, pretty close to in lecture. Uh, a ureter, you get Tough to keep these straight. There are two ureters, one from each kidney. They go to the bladder. There's one urethra that goes from the bladder to the exterior of the body. Um, in males, there is an inguinal canal that goes to a scrotal sac that contains the testis and epididymis. The vas deferens is the tube that connects the testis and epididymis to the urethra. All right, once you stop there for a sec. Good. Okay, um, so this is a female fetal pig. I've opened her up a little bit, but you can tell by the irrigenital papilia here. Uh, one of the main differences with pigs, you'll notice there's, there's the, the anus of the, of the female pig. And then right here, I've opened that papilla up, and there's, there's one tube, basically, um, to the exterior of the body um, for urine and the reproductive tract in a pig. And, of course, in humans, there's, there's two. Um, so if we open that up, um, we can see here... Um, uh, the, the same sort of setup with the bladder, where we have umbilical arteries and then a ure ureter. They don't, they don't show up quite as good. There's a ureter. Okay, so here's a ureter, here's an umbilical artery. Uh, over here, there's another ureter, another umbilical artery. Between them is the urethra that goes down and out. I should mention, in, in, in pigs and in humans, uh, males, the testis actually form up in, in the abdominal cavity and descend through that inguinal canal into the scrotal sac um, as they mature. So, um, yeah, a little bit different here. So if we look then here, uh, this is the bladder, and, and now I'm going to pull this back. So here's the bladder from a side view with an umbilical artery along it. And right here, very easily, we see uh, that urethra right here coming out of the bladder. Right below it is the reproductive tract. Um, this would be the uh, uterus up high, and then the vagina down here, and they both merge into the urogenital sinus on the pig here. Um, let's see if I can separate this off just a little bit. Um, and, and go to the exterior of the body. Of course, that's different in pigs than in humans. Um, I want to just track this uh, uterus here, um, you can see this is the uterus and it's going up up here kind of in front of the bladder. So I'm going to pull this down here and back. Okay, and so right here then, um, if we, if we, uh, if I get this out of the way, here's, here's the top of the uterus right here and it kind of separates, kind of like a slingshot right here. And this is one horn of the uterus. This is the other horn of a uterus. Uh, now, humans don't have that. There's just a short little uh, uh, horn of a uterus, and then uh, it goes over to an ovary. Okay, so here's one ovary right here. Okay, it's, like, it's kidney-shaped, but it's much smaller. And then there's another ovary right here. Now, you, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this well or not. But there's a little squiggly tube right here. Beck, how, how is that showing up? You can see it. Okay. The tube gets much smaller. This, this horn of the uterus, if you look at the size of that, and compare it to this little bitty tube right here, this is the fallopian tube or oviduct right here. And this is the horn of a uterus. In humans, there would be almost only a oviduct or, or fallopian tube. And it's connected by a st structure. The end of the, the fallopian tube or oviduct here is called the fimbria of the infundibulum. I will never make you remember that term. Um, but it acts like a little vacuum cleaner. It isn't structurally connected to the ovary, but once each month, uh, an egg will pop out of the ovary and it will just fall to the bottom of the abdominal cavity floor unless that uh, fimbria uh, picks it up, kind of like a little vacuum cleaner, constantly going over the surface of the ovary looking for an egg to pick up. So it's kind of neat that it's not an actual structural connection there, 
but uh, sort of a little bit of a chance has to happen. So anyway, um, horn of the uterus in a pig, not that big in humans. Pigs give birth to litters. Humans typically give birth to one. Ladies, you'll be happy about that. Um, and uh, uh, oviduct and, uh, you, and, and ovary. And um, those are the main parts then of the reproductive and urinary tract in a female fetal pig. But again, you can see a much shorter tube carrying urine from the bladder to the exterior of the body. And uh, why, uh, again, men have more chance of getting a block tube, women have a more, more of a chance of getting a, an infection uh, because it's such a short trip up to the bladder. Okay, why don't you pause it there, Beck? Okay, folks, I just wanted to go over some of the circulatory system, particularly stuff we've talked about. Um, here, again, this is the heart. I pulled it to the side. Um, this would be the right atrium. And um, the big vessel coming in to it from below would be the inferior vena cava right here, and from above, the superior vena cava right here. Okay, so those two big veins are flowing into the right atrium. Blood goes to the right ventricle, out to the lungs, through the pulmonary artery, right there, back to the pulmonary, by the pulmonary veins to the left ventricle, and out the aorta, which is right there, to the rest of the body. Uh, start off with, I just wanted to show you the first branch in the system. We talked quite a bit about subclavian veins. This is where the lymphatic system carries all its constituents back to the circulatory system. This is the right subclavian vein, and down here is the left subclavian vein. They're not mirror images of each other, but look, that, that uh, fat and lymph and everything else gets dumped into the circulatory system right here and goes right into the heart. So I wanted, wanted you to see that, that uh, close association right there. Uh, okay, Beck, you can pause it for a sec. Okay, so what I've done now is I've cut that vena cava out of the way and the, um, the uh, right and left subclavian veins. And uh, I've cut two others out of the way here too. Uh, one is right here, and that actually runs up um, the side of the neck. Right here, I think, can you see that vein, Beck? That blue vein right there? And there's another up the other side. That's the jugular vein. So when somebody says they're going for the jugular, yeah, that's what they're going for. That's the big vein that comes back here and connects right to the vena cava. So I pulled that out of the way and I've exposed the aorta. That's right here, okay? The aorta um, does a couple of things. It goes right up here and it branches right away. Um, this is the right subclavian um, artery. And uh, up here is the left subclavian artery. Again, they're not mirror images of each other. Okay, well, let me see here what I've got here. Nope, I got that wrong. Nope, scratch that. This is the right subclavian artery. There it is. The left subclavian should come off a little bit lower. Uh, every pig's a little bit different, so I'm having a little trouble finding it. down in here hmm. or it doesn't have one <laughs> okay well there it is right there right off the top of the arch of the aorta is the left subclavian so right subclavian left subclavian okay this is the pulmonary here so don't confuse the pulmonary artery with the aorta right here okay so right here though this is what I want to key on right here here, this, this is where that aorta branches, the branch that goes up here. This, this is a carotid artery here, and this is a carotid artery here. They're right underneath the jugular vein. So here's that jugular is a carotid right underneath it. And it goes up and carries blood to the head, neck region. And same with this uh, left carotid here. So you've got aorta, you've got subclavian arteries, and you've got carotid arteries. Okay, you can pause it there, Beck. Okay. So um, last, uh, last clip, um, this, uh, we're going to look at the uh, descending aorta. The ascending aorta, we talked about all the vessels underneath the vena cava that go up to the head and neck region. So I'm going to flip the, the liver over here, and right in front of the spine is a fairly large vessel. That's it right here. This is the aorta. And as it's coming down, there are little vessels that are coming off it and going um, over to... Um, 
Oh, muscles like the intercostal muscles right here between the ribs. That's that's that is your baby back ribs. Um, but right here, then this this it's, it is a large tube. I mean, it's it's significantly big. Um, this is the aorta. So we're just looking at a few last main branches. So as that aorta comes down, the 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 next main branch right here, uh, this goes to the stomach, and this is called the celiac artery, like celiac disease. Okay. So there's the celiac artery. Uh, right below it, there's another one right here going to the small intestines. This is a mesenteric artery. If you remember, the stuff that holds the small intestines, that thin stuff with the vessels in it, that's mesentery right here. So the mesenteric artery goes to that. So celiac, mesenteric. This is the kidney, kind of a little beat up here, but this is the kidney. And uh, there's the artery going to the kidney, and that's the renal artery. The renal vein is right here. It sat right on top of it, and I cut that out of the way. So remember, the renal artery is actually carrying dirty blood to the kidney. The renal vein is carrying clean blood, but less oxygen in it, away from the kidney. Okay. There are some lesser arteries and veins here, but I'm not going to worry about them. just want to show you the last two. Um, here we have the X, uh, to me this always looks like a little person. This is the end of the aorta down here, okay? And these would be two arms and two legs. Uh, these two arms would be the external iliacs. Uh, they go down and become the femoral artery, the main artery in the, in the leg. These last two right here, the internal iliacs, those actually become the uh, umbilical arteries and they cease to pump blood after the piggy's born. So again, celi or celiac, mesenteric, Renal, there's another renal down under here that goes to the other side. Celiac, mesenteric, renal, external iliac, internal iliacs. I will um, get you a study guide as to what of these terms I want you to know for the exam. Remember, the main thing here today is so that you can see generally how people are put together based on this pig model. And, and that's the main goal here today. All right, thank you.